So we finished uh, estimating the surface energy for the so-called 111 plane in a FCC structure. Now let's look at a different surface. What if the single crystal is exposing another crystalline surface plane? We are looking at uh, what uh, crystal structure? Still FCC. But now let's look at the so-called uh, 002 plane. If this is your origin at the corner, where is our 002 plane? Well, you would be half, right? It will be this here because this one would be 001, but the halfway in the middle, that's our so called 002 plane. Okay? And we make the same assumptions. What? Broken bound excess energy broken bound excess energy per atom is still half of bonding strength. Make sense? Because a bond typically connects how many atoms? Two atoms. And when you break the bond, uh, at the energy for each of the atoms is reached by half of the bonding strength. Make sense? That's the same uh, assumption. And then we are looking at uh, FCC crystal structure. FCC. Okay? And that's what we have previously. What does epsilon mean? Bonding energy, bonding strength. What does LS mean? So-called sublimation energy from FCC solid crystal into single atom gas. In that process, you break all the bonds and the, the bonding energy and the sublimation energy is related by six NA. What does NA mean? Our gradual number because quite often we measure the sublimation energy by per molar. Make sense? Okay, so that's what we have. And now let's count. Let's do the counting. The number of nearest neighbors and for a specific atom on this 0, 0, 002 surface plane will lose. If the crystal is cut from here. If the crystal is cut along this 002 plane parallel to here, for any single atom within this plane, how many of its nearest neighbor will be lost? Okay? So, let's consider A atom here. Make sense? Let's consider A atom. When I cut between here and exposing this 0, 0, 002 plane. Do you see A1? The bonding between A and A1 would be broken. Make sense? Similarly, on the other side, between A and A2 will also be broken. Similarly, between A and A3 would also be broken, right? And the A1, A, a2, A, A3, A, all these are the so-called nearest neighbor for A. Make sense? Because we are only considering closest, nearest neighbor. I'm not considering the bonding between A and uh, this guy because it is further away. Make sense? I'm only considering A1, A2, A3. And then remember, this is one unit cell. There will be another unit cell neighboring in the front. So somewhere here, you would find the A4, the bonding between A and A4, which is actually opposite to A3, would be also broken, right? If we do the counting, the number of atoms, nearest neighbor atoms that will be lost for this single atom I'm looking within this 0, 0 plane, there are two plans, would be four. Four bonds will be broken for a specific atom of A within this 002 plane. If I cut from here, parallel to 002 plane. Okay? And similar to what we did before, if we cut four bonds, then the so called excess energy per atom excess energy per atom at this solid uh, vacuum or solid vapor interface 
E as with 0, 0, 2. Again, E for excess energy, S for solid, V for vacuum or vapor. For this 0, 0, 2 would be 4 times half of epsilon, right? Because when you break each bond, the atom got energy reached by half of epsilon. So four of them is four times this one. And from previously, we can get it here. Make sense? That's the excess energy per surface atom. Then we said we are more concerned with the energy per unit area, right? That's a typical unit for surface energy, not per atom, but per unit area, okay, for this surface plane. And similarly, we are going to write gamma for surface energy per unit area would be E, excess energy per atom, times N means the number density. What density? Area density, number per unit area for what plane? 0, 0, 2 plane, okay? So now it becomes, can we estimate or calculate this N002, okay? So the first term is L over NA over 3, we keep, and the second term is N. Now let's look at uh, this so-called 0, 0, 2 plane, 0, 0, 2, which is a shaded plane, and I redraw it here. Do you see that? This A atom would re represent this guy, one atom. This black one would be on the right. This one would be on the back, and this one on the other side. Make sense? And from here to here is our A means what? Lattice parameter, right? And what is R? Radius for the atom, right? That's how the atom would pack in this 0, 0, 2 plane. And from here to here is our A. And of course, from similar to what we have before, we still have the relationship between what? R, radius, and A. I'll put it another way. 4R would be equal to square root of 2 times A. Make sense? Now, in this case, how do we estimate n? Well, you can do different things, right? We can do, we keep the first term for the excess energy per atom, and then n, if I'm looking at uh, this small circle, this, sorry, small square, this dash the small square, how many atoms within this dashed small square? Here is 1 over 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Totally gives me 1. And what's the edge length for this small square? It's 2R, right? And what is 2R? 2R is square root of 2 over 2 times A. So that's our area density. Okay? And of course, we can work out the mass to be 0.67 times Ls over Na A square. Which means, okay, the surface energy for this 0, 0, 2 plane would be a different number. It can be estimated similarly if you know the sublimation energy, if you know the lattice constant. Okay? And of course, you notice here when I do this estimation, I'm counting this oblique square. If I count this square, how many atoms within this bigger square? Half here, half here, so half here, half here. So totally, I would on the numerator, I would have two, but the denominator, I would have a square, right? And in the end, I would have the same answer. Okay?